Hello and welcome back to Dragon Lord Productions and I'm making a new series for tutorials and I'm going to show you in this tutorial how to make a hunter's knife. Let's get started. Okay, first off, you need a craft knife, a ruler, a piece of paper or card, that, depending on what you want, a pencil, and a cutting board. Or you can download a template from my site. If you don't want to download a template and want to draw one yourself and want a much larger sized knife, then I would advise getting a slightly larger piece of paper. Not too much larger, because this knife is almost the right size if you're a child. Then you can either look on the internet and study the knife very carefully, just like I did drawing this template, and just estimate all the sizes. Or if you want to be all technical and get it as accurate as possible, you can take some kind of measurements and figure it out that way using maths, which I cannot be bothered to do. Or you can just study my designs and work from there. Or I suppose if you're just going for accuracy and still don't want to draw it yourself, you can just download my file onto a larger piece of paper if you have a printer big enough. Now for this next step, I forgot to mention, you're going to want a compass, because these holes, although drawing them by hand, you can get a good circle, it's not a good enough circle, and it's just much better and much safer to use a compass to draw the circles, and you might want to get them a bit bigger and measure them with your hand. You may want to be a little more careful than I am being with my knife. In case you cut your fingers off, I would not advise keeping your hands overly too close to the knife in case you cut your fingers off. You may want to measure the size of the holes against your fingers in order to make sure that they fit properly and you can get a good grip on the knife. Remembering that the one at the end of the handle is for your thumb and the one close to the blade for your little finger. Now you've cut out your stencil, you can place it on the foam and start marking it out. Now you don't have to use pins to hold your stencil in place, but I just find it much easier so that it doesn't move about, especially with that thin bit on the top of the blade pointing back. that you can then start cutting out in the foam. Make sure that you use a cutting board. And try and make sure that you're more careful than I probably was. After all, you are using a sharp object. As you can see, I've found it easier to cut the knife away from the rest of the foam so that I can work in more detail. As 
As you can also see, I like to cut off in sections. Okay, so that was the tutorial, and this is the finished product. Okay, so this isn't the pro finished product of what I was showing you to make. It is the same uh, design, the same style, the same, based off of the same knife, but the problem is this one's actually made of wood. It is a much sturdier than the foam one. This is the foam knife. As you can see, nothing much has happened to it since I cut it out. But the reason I've got this one instead of the foam one is because my friend uh, had the right tools to cut out stuff like the holes and the edge along here to make it, well, a blade, and so that, so that it could, if it was real, be used to stab and slice and cut things. But the foam could work. My friend suggested if you are making the foam one, that using card is a good tool, uh, or would be good to um, strengthen the foam, make it less flexible. So if you are making the foam one, do that. But the tools that he had, which I'm going to tell you now that I do not have, because I had the money virtually, is a Dremel. A Dremel has different cutting tools. One is a small rotational blade, which you use to cut along here, and then the other is another one is like a little sticky outlet, which is fast, which you use to get, dig in and cut around these holes here.